All right. All right, guys. So let's, uh, I put a little chat link. Did you guys see it? Collaboratepros.com slash live. Yes. If you go yeah. on there, there is a link um, that Ken has for uh, some of his tax stuff. Um, you can check that out while I'm going to introduce Ken and kind of give you a backstory on how him and I met and how this man has literally changed my life. Um, and then uh, I'll, I'll just, I'll give it over to him because he's the expert here. Um, essentially, we met, I don't know, eight, nine years ago, something like that. Um, I happened to be in a business meeting with another guy and, and Ken said to me something about, you know, who's my accountant? And I'm like, uh, accountants, right? Like they drive me nuts, just like insurance people. And uh, his, his whole thing is he thinks outside the box. You know, he hires bookkeepers and accountants all day long, but they drive them nuts because they can't think outside of a box. You know, they're analytical. So they're, you know, on or off or black or white. Um, but Ken thinks outside of the box. Um, one of the coolest things I've ever seen him do in life is um, he knew somebody who was selling a million dollar plus piece of property, right? And um, this guy talked him into that guy donating it to him um, and it would save him more money in taxes than if the guy were to sell it. So he got a million dollar piece of property just because he actually owned a 501c3 and 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 would you turn it into a, a park and playground or what? Um, actually, we're in the process of selling it for three million. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to sell it for three million. I'll bet you're not going to pay taxes on that three million. I don't think so. Look at that, man. I didn't even know that about this guy. So um, really cool stuff, right, guys? Um, so anyway, like Ken, he really has a heart of helping people. Um, when we first met him, I say we, my wife and I, he literally met with us every single week and we discussed you know, issues and problems in our business. And um, he has another program called Turbo Growth and it teaches businesses how to grow. And essentially what we sat down every week and discussed the problems we had. And then I said, hey, I'm gonna fix number one and I'm gonna fix number two before we meet next week, right? And if I show up next week and I didn't do my two, then he pulled out his whip and stick, right? And beat me down so that next time I would actually perform. Uh, and we, I mean, we met every week for a couple of years, right? That's quite a while. Yeah. I mean, it's like an amazing man here. Um, he just really poured into me and my business and my life and uh, has made such a difference. Um, so... What do you want to say about yourself? It's hard to brag on yourself, but what is your specialty, Ken? I guess thinking outside the box. You know, I'm, I get interested in, um, I am a CPA, but basically if you look at CPA work, is basically a, I want to do an accounting job for you that you don't want to do. And I need to file a tax return. I'm going to charge you a lot of money for that. You don't want to file a tax return. You don't want to pay me to do that. What do you want? I want to be rich and I don't want to pay taxes. I want to keep all the money in my pocket. Now, which of those two things that I sell don't you want? I've never gotten anybody to say, well, I want to be rich, but I'll, I, I'm obligated to pay the government. Okay. Everybody wants both of them. And the, the, the normal, uh, and I don't want to talk my, my counterparts down, the, the normal CPA is only looking at your tax return and your accounting. That's all. Okay. And they're not thinking anything else. But basically, it's looking at, at an individual and looking at their goals and objectives and um, what do you want to do? I've got a business, I want to grow it, okay? Um, and, or I want to buy this business and I want to, um, I want to grow it and I, I, I'd like to structure it properly. Um, those are the things that basically I do. Um, I got interested years ago in, um, in utilizing the tax law and, um, looking for the holes in the tax law where you could drop money in and there is little or no taxes due. Um, so basically it's, uh, I tell people I'm no different than a 13 year old in the basement playing computer games. 
I just do it with real money and real things. Monopoly with real money, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh -huh. yes. So, I, from okay. what I understand and what Ken has taught me, there's essentially two programs to essentially sell your business tax free. Um, one is a, um, it's called small, what's it called? Um, qualified small business. Qualified stock. small business. So, yeah. qualified small business stock is one of the two programs. Now, the other program is a, a Roth 401k. Right? right. So the Roth 401k, you essentially run your business from your Roth. And then when you sell it, you keep the money in there until you're 59 and a half. Now I'm about 11, 12 years from there. So if I were to sell my business right now, I want to keep the money in there for the next 11 years. And then when I pull it out, it's tax free. Correct. But during that time, you have total control over the money. So I, I sell this business or I sell this house. Um, I, I've got a lot of money in the bank. I've got a checkbook in my hand to go and do the next deal. Okay. So you can so reinvest it, it, it's right? It's like I'm not, um, I haven't uh, given that money away to somebody else to control. I control it. Mm. Okay. So it, it, that's, um, that's what basically these two programs are, are all about. And then the other one's the qualified small business stock. So that one, you don't have to be 59 and a half to wait for your money, correct? Right. Where we use that is when we, when we find uh, um, a business that I anticipate uh, will be sold down the road, um, like high tech business, um, and we, um, we structure it with a qualified small business stock uh, uh, entity. So I'm going to pull up, I'm going to pull it up on the screen right now. We'll, we'll just kind of go over it, right? Can I download that? Yeah. Did you guys all download it? Has anybody not downloaded it? Yes. That has a lot of the detail in there because it's... Um, it, that covers everything up, right? Yeah. It, well, it covers everything uh, that the programs uh, permit you to do. All right. Okay. So you guys all see my screen, all right? Yes. Yeah. Is anybody excited about this? I mean, I like, man, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> for real. It's you sure can good, put a sure house in, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The only thing you can't do with uh, the the four hundred one k is I can buy a beautiful house, but I can't live in it. Okay. I've got clients that go down to Mexico on the um, on the water on the I, I don't know what's the Gulf. Uh, oh yeah. Port of Canasco, uh, yeah, uh, Rocky Point, yeah, and, and uh, they buy condos, okay, and so they rent them out like Airbnb up here, um, and there's there's people down there that um, handle that stuff for them. Um, they uh, um, they're not supposed to live in them, but they can be the manager of those uh, condos. And they can go down there for a week and check it out, make sure everything is is a pro, you know, not tore up or anything, and stay at the condo on the water. Okay, that's pretty cool. So you can throw some rental properties in there. You can sell them and not pay capital gains on them eventually. Yeah, right? you don't pay capital gains. No, that's awesome. <laughs> I, I mean, I own one house that I don't live in. I rent it out. So, um, yeah, that's huge. All right, so. We're going to go over these two different types. One's the Roth 401k uh, business. Um, so start or buy a business of your own by investing your retirement assets into a C corporation. Yeah. Now I'm with the 401, the, the, it's called Rob's uh, rollover business startup with that money. It's like, I work for a company a uh, number of years. I got a month, bunch of money build up there, I, I want out, I wanna do my own business, okay? I Once I leave that company, I can take that money from that employer and, and use it in this uh, Rob's business program. I can either start a business from scratch or I can go and buy a business, okay? Now, when I do that, uh, I, I don't own the business. My pension plan owns the business. So basically what I do 
is I would go to work for that company and I can draw a salary. I can, uh, of my choosing, and I can uh, have the fringe benefits that I want, okay, in that company, okay? And I'm just like in a normal employer on any other, other uh, business. Uh, so it's like, uh, but if I sell that business before I'm 59 and a half, then I have to put that money back in on my pension plan and wait to a 59 and a half to avoid a 10% penalty, okay? I can take it out before that, but I'm gonna pay the tax and the penalty. What we do on the, on the ROBS program is we structure them so they're tax-free. And, they're, and there's certain way of selling that business um, such that it will, that money that you sell the business for will remain tax-free. And what I mean by that is if I, uh, when you have to, it's, it's, it's like in farming, I buy the seed, but if the seed makes a lot of, uh, produces a, a big yield, that yield is tax-free also. I only paid money on the seed. I don't pay money on the, on the, uh, on the, uh, the benefit or the profits. Mm. Okay. So it's like, I can build up to millions of dollars. It doesn't matter. Okay. Nice. So, um, right here, it says, what are the financial options within this program? Did you cover this, uh, product factoring? Does anybody here sell products in their business? No, no. Uh, if you sold products, if I if I sold this bottle of wine, uh, of water, wine. What are you thinking about? <laughs> Drinking time. <laughs> if I it, it, well, what if you sell wine? I do have a wine client. Um, but basically, if I sell it on an invoice, okay, um, I, I I sell you this bottle and you pay me in thirty days. Normal, rough, the normal uh, discount is basically, I then take immediately that invoice over to my 401k plan. And I sell it to my own 401k plan. And my 401k plan- You sell is, the receivable. I resell the receivable. Mm -hmm. And the receivable, I sell it for say 95 cents on the dollar. So what that does is it lowers my profit in my company and it produces, it shoves that profit over into the 401k plan. Potentially uh, it could be either deferred or totally tax-free. You think about it at a 5% discount on my 401k plan, I'm making 60% rate of return wow. annually wow. Uh, by just doing that simple uh, transaction, rolling that money over every 30 days. Angela, are you, so she sells a book. Is that manufacturing? Is that a product? As long as I can, it's a personal product. As long as I can feel and touch it, it's, it's, I, uh, it's okay. As long as I sell it on an invoice, you sell me your book on, uh, for cash. Okay. You don't have an invoice. Better stop giving them out, Angela. Start selling. <laughs> All right, cool. So um, the next thing it says, can these assets be sheltered from creditors? How would you explain that? Yeah, I just had a, 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 um, a client tell me, I was unaware of it. Uh, they had went through bankruptcy. And because of the, the structure on these assets that were in the 401k plan, um, she said the bank tried their darndest to get those houses, but they couldn't Ooh, because they were in the pension plan. So if you could take it back to your business uh, being owned by the pension plan, nobody's going to get, you personally can go bankrupt, but the, the, the bank, uh, nobody's going to get that, that business. Well, we don't plan on going bankrupt, but that is pretty cool to know, right? Yeah. 
All right, so I don't know why this just went to a big screen, but okay. So how are profits taxed in this? Um, the profits, because it has to be uh, run as a C, C corporation, Corp. it's a separate uh, entity. Um, the, the, whatever profits the tax, uh, the corporation makes, they need to pay tax on it. So can't you just, Annually. can't you just make yourself a salary enough that you don't pay that much taxes in the corporation? Um, yes, but a lot of times the corporate taxes are lower. And what you really want to do with any kind of business, my whole goal is I want to start out relatively small and market and build that business into something valuable mm. such that you somebody comes it. knocking on my door, I, I want to buy it. Okay. Okay. Well, and then I can convert it over to tax free. Okay. Cool. Question. Yeah. Rob? I have a question. I, you know, my, my whole business philosophy is grow profits and it sounds like this would benefit my clients is that something i can refer to you if they're interested in this yes uh, i mean what kind of clients you have? what do you mean what do you have well right now in person i'm calling on manufacturers primarily or they're they're they're, they're guys that let's say build trailers in a in a shop so they might do i don't know a trailer sells for anywhere from four grand to 50 grand, I imagine. And, you know, they might have three or four people working for them. That's it. You know, but other people straighten wheels, they, they offer a service. Other people are manufacturing via CNC machining. So who knows what their volume is? I mean, they might be providing, I know one of them is providing pro, uh, parts for Malibu boats. So I'm sure that's a very healthy business, that one. Another one, another CNC is doing it for the government. So I don't know how that fits into this, but I'm thinking, I don't know anything about this. If I could turn it over to you and you could have a conference with them, a call with them and they see the benefit, then that would further grow the revenue because they're not paying as much tax. That's correct. As long as you can feel and touch a product, you can do the factoring and you don't have, need to be, you don't, you have to have a 401k to, to put that invoice in but okay. that, but that business doesn't necessarily need to be a Rob's business. You can do it with any kind of business. Well, if I could simply be there and I can go over and I can add you in as a line item to things that they, I'll give them choices as to what they want to talk about. Do you want to talk about reducing expenses? Do you want to talk about growing revenue? Under reducing expenses, this would be a line item, right? Under reducing expenses, or would this uh, be under revenue? Uh, this this would be um, uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't necessarily be well it would be reducing profits okay because at five percent I'm taking that five percent of that that invoice discount off of my business and I'm putting it over into my uh, retirement plan okay so so it's like when I give talks, it's basically, it's like uh, you're skimming money off the top, okay? But it's legal. You're just putting it somewhere else. Yeah, so yeah. he says there's, there's a personal side and then there's the business side of the 401k. So you're moving it from the business side to the personal side, correct? Right. But because you're doing that, you're paying less in taxes. So that actually is reducing your expenses. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's a great question. Great question, Rob. I mean, wasn't this named after you? Isn't it a Rob IRA? Yeah, right. There you go. All right. So we already answered this one. 59 and a half to pull the money out. What's the main benefit of this program? Um, I mean, tax free, right? Um, yeah, it's it's basically you can structure it. What we do, um, say I have a hundred grand in my in the money that I want to put in this Rob's business. Okay. When you set up the corporation, what we do is set up the corporation and somebody has to own the stock. Well, my 401k plan is the owner. So that we take and convert, uh, say about $10,000 of, of untaxed 401k money over into the other side of the 401k plan, 
which is called the Roth side, okay? And you pay tax on that when you do that conversion, okay? But that $10,000 then comes but down and buys the stock in that new corporation. But I still need money. So basically what you do is I go back up into the 401k again, un, untaxed money, and say, loan me some money into this corporation. So I've got $10,000 of totally taxed of money down here, and then $90,000 that I really owe, the company really owes the 401k back. And that's the way we structure it. And it, 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 the whole goal is I'm making a lot of money in my company, so I have enough money to pay off back that $90,000 back into the 401k. And so then some down the road, I've grown this business fairly large. Somebody comes knocking on my door, I want to buy you, okay? You don't sell the assets, okay? You sell, I, I'll sell you the whole, whole uh, company stock. When you do that, by doing that, you do not have any, um, any taxable issues in the corporation. All of that, you're sold that corporation and all of that tax-free money goes back up into the 401k. So it's a stock purchase, not an asset. It's purchase. a stock purchase, not an asset. Mm. So basically what I tell my clients is you can do anything with your money you want anytime, as long as as you pick up a cell phone and call me before you pick up a pen, okay? Because basically most of the people don't know what, the majority of people don't know what they're doing. Well, I think I think Donald Trump knows it. And that's why everybody's pissed off that the guy doesn't pay much taxes. I mean, if you're doing this program, I mean, it's a program that's, that's enabled people to, you know, do what they well, want with their money, a, right? A lot of, a lot of people, try to scam the, the tax area, not knowing how to do it legally. When they, the boys and girls in Washington, when they set up these, these rules, they, they leave holes in, a, in the tax law. And basically what I do is I look for the holes. Yep. So it's basically what you may hear at, uh, from an IRS agent, well, they didn't intend for you to do this. I don't care what they intended. Tell me that it's against the law. It's legal, right? Yeah, it's legal. So, uh, so next question here. What is the maximum amount of gain allowed with this program? There's no maximum. So you could sell your business $100 million? $100 million. And, and not pay taxes on that? And not pay taxes. Wow. Like, mm. I've heard a lot of cool things on all the shows I've been on today, but that's probably the coolest thing I've heard. I'm in the Rob's area. In the Rob's. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Um, anybody here sell a hundred million dollar business? Like, um, let's let's get a little group together and <laughs> and share it. Like, I'd be totally happy to share thirty million of untaxed I'm, money I'm, with everybody on this. Hundred hundred million dollar businesses, I take a cut. Okay, <laughs> like happily happy to give that cut. Um, that's pretty cool. Uh, what is the required investment for this program? Um, there really isn't any specified amount uh, required for the ROBS program. It's basically, if I'm starting out from scratch, I have zero assets, zero business or whatever, I set up a corporation. Um, we set them up in Arizona and maybe we're, we're, it costs us a couple hundred dollars. Okay, that's the amount that my stock is worth day one because I uh, and basically if I'm building it after a while then I'm adding value to that that stock all right all right is there a maximum amount of assets that can be accumulated in this program no there's no maximum amount I'll bet you there's some really big robs that some there's a, own, there's huh? some people on the internet that they've racked up They've utilized this program uh, to rack up millions of dollars. I would imagine um, billions, right? Yeah. Wow. Um, oh, here, we asked this before. Can the program also hold real estate property? Yes. 
but you, on, in a general rule, you never want to put real estate in a corporation or an S corp or anything like that. What you do is I'm required to have the, the, the Rob's corporation be a, a C corporation, but say I, I want to buy that, that building um, to house that, that corporation. I set up an LLC and it, it can be taxed as structured as tax free or tax deferred. And I buy that building in that LLC. And say I'm, I'm selling the company. A lot of times people will sell the company, I'll sell you the business, but I still own, own the, own the uh, building yeah. and I get rent from it. So um, the, you have a lot of options. All right, um, guys, if you ever have questions on any of this stuff, just raise your hand or speak up. Like, I'm totally happy to be interrupted, okay? I don't wanna go too fast. I wanna make sure you guys have some good questions. Um, any questions at this point? The no, all right, cool. Um, can you convert existing business over to utilize this program? No, one of the rules is that you can't um, you can't take something I already own personally and put it into my retirement plan. Okay. Uh, so I can't take a business that I own and put it in there or a rental house and put it in there. I have to, um, uh, I have to buy it with, with, with money, new assets. Okay. So there, there is a way to get your business into there, but you have to buy it. No, no, right? you can't, you can't buy your own business. Okay. Okay. So let's say, let's say for, I don't know, some sort of purpose. Let's say I have a business and I have, I don't know, say I'm bringing in half a million dollars a year. Can I start a whole nother business and then just kind of start running that business with that? Or how, how do you, is there a way to get it into there? You theoretically can do that. OK, if I have this business over here and <laughs> then I start a whole new company corporation over here. And and I'm starting fresh with that, um, then I can do that. OK, you right. could probably sell it, right? The old business and invest that money. That's, well, you can't invest that money because it's personal private money. Oh, gotcha. OK, uh, you, you you can only deal with uh, the uh, pension money that you have. OK, I see. All right, we'll go over to We'll check out the other program in a minute, but it looks like the other program allows you to do that. Yeah. All right. Um, so can another corporation own stock in the entity? Um, no, no, that's prohibited under the law. OK. So it's, it's your money. It's your plan. Other partners may invest in the business with whatever they choose. Right. Okay. All right. What if an interest is acquired by gift or inheritance? Um, if you inherit it, um, you're, you're not required to take a minimum distribution. Um, you just uh, should be able to continue. Okay. All right. Uh, this is a great question. What records or accounting needs to be kept? Well, you you ultimately are going to uh, put this on a tax return, and and you really have to have the backup uh, records to simply say, no, I don't. I this is Rob's money, uh, Roth money. I don't pay tax on it. Okay. Or if it's regular money, okay, I it is my pension money and I do have to pay tax, but I am 59 and a half, so there's no penalty. Hmm. Okay. Um, all right. What happens if the stock is sold or just dis distributed before the end of the five-year holding period? Is there a five-year holding period on a Rob? Yes. Okay. okay. From the date I start it, to the date I can really sell it and say, you know, it's all in my retirement plan tax-free. Um, there has to be a, a 
five year period. So it's basically if I sell it uh, beforehand, um, there there is uh, um, uh, I, I I well, what do you mean? Uh, it, Ten percent penalty. Um, yeah, if I take the money out, okay. But if I but if I sell it, and I can reinvest it in in my pension plan. Let's say I start a business today with the Rob's program, and I sell it four years from now, and I'm not fifty nine and a half. Do I get well, penalized? The, the fifty nine and a half is when you want to take it out and put it in your pocket. Yeah, I get okay. that. But let's say four years goes by, and then I sell. Um. It's you. You basically need to really kind of start over and and uh, reinvest that money. Okay. Into something. In order else. to not be taxed. In order to not. Be okay. Taxes. So that's all you do is just go invest in another business. Okay. Any questions there? Okay. All right. So all right, getting through this. Um, how must the C corporation stock be acquired? Well, like I said, you're, you're buying it from the the 401k is buying it. Okay. All right. So you put your personal money in and then you buy it, right? Well, you don't put your personal money in. You've got a corporate, you set up a corporation oh, that's right. and then the 401k buys that stock. I gotcha. Is it possible to reward employees or attract investors with this program? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, and issue additional stock to employees for performance right or attract investors okay i um, thought we said that investors couldn't invest back on the previous corporations time. can't oh gotcha okay, okay. private investors different yeah okay yeah you and, always you, and, you and i could, i could have a, a my pension money in this business and you come in with your private money okay <laughs> The only uh, uh, the only thing is if if uh, you sell your stock or whatever, yours is yours is taxed. Okay, gotcha. Because I'm not inside there; I'm just an investor. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> Ken always tells me it's no fun having partners, right? You're against partners. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I agree. Mean, yeah, I, I agree. would agree too. Like. I've, I've read a lot of books about partners and they they tainted my mind uh, such that you know I it doesn't it doesn't go along with the normal honesty uh, provisions. In, That's too bad. In life. I always feel like one partner might work harder than the other. I don't know. I just feel like I just feel like the old the old eighty twenty rule. One partner does eighty percent of the work. You know. Or one person thinks he's doing eighty percent and he's not. Like there's, you know, there's always going to be something. Or right. when when uh, your partner comes and stabs you in the back, okay? I'm sure that yeah. happens. Sadly, yeah. I mean, you would never think it, right? And then stuff always happens, right? Does a filing does filing a personal tax return as married filing separately affect the tax free profit deduction? Um, no, not in not in the the Robs. Okay. All right, so we're done talking about the ROBS. We're going to go back to the um, qualified small business stock. Do we have any questions on the ROBS before we move on? Any thoughts? Is anybody excited about this? Yes, my husband joined a little bit late, so I okay. apologize. Uh, right. So uh, he's uh, 59 plus years old. And uh, so basically, just to clarify, we have an LLC business. And so this information for C uh preparation you have, what do you want to do do you have a, you have an llc with your business in it so basically i understand we cannot change it uh llc to c corporation no. you it's basically you personally own that llc you can't take that and put it into the pension plan Oh, so we can put in pension plan. No, okay. you can't. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a separate, it, it's personally owned and, and you have to look at a pension as 
I'm the only only thing is I'm the beneficiary of that pension. It's not my my money until I uh, I I really take it out. Okay, it's a it's a it's really in a trust at that point. That's what a four hundred one k plan is. It's a trust. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like you should. Do you have any more questions on that, Tatiana? Uh, Tim. Uh, well, my husband named Tim. He's uh, um, he's a Tim. Can you hear us? Yeah. Yes. Say hi. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's you or me listed as Tatiana, but that's our dog. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, I kind of got in kind of late, so. Um, yeah, so uh, the business she's talking about is is an LLC set up as a C corp. So um, I think I understand. So you're recommending people to set up a uh, a corporation, uh, uh, some sort of. Well, I guess it's is it set up a corporation, and then uh, I, I guess as far as some of the details. How would we? Um... I think your you guys would fall better in the qualified small business stock. Correct, Ken? Um, yeah. What kind of business you have? It's a roofing and remodeling business. Okay. Okay. So in the qualified business, small business stock, it sounds like you could bring a, a corporation into it. So that's I think that's why there's two programs. One, you've already started your business. I don't think you can get it into the Roth. Uh, the other you, the other program, since you already started your business, you could bring it into the qualified small business stock. Is that right? right? Ba basically, um, you really have to have a C corporation in both entities. Um, um, generally, uh, um, I'd have to check, but I don't think you can really uh, take the LLC and and have a tax as a corporation and and qualify in, in either program. Okay. And then like, so I've heard what you're hearing right now, like, and I heard this a few years ago and it took me time to actually extract all the knowledge out of this guy's brain. Um, but when I heard C corporation, I thought, man, forget this. Like, I don't want to see corporation because I'm going to pay so much in taxes. However, I don't know if we're going to get into this right here, but when you have a qualified small business stock, you actually have a C corporation and an S corporation. And the S corporation actually invoices your C corporation, correct? So he sets it up where you have an S corp and a C corp and the S corp invoices the C corp. So you're taxed as an S corp, not a C corp. Um, and there's actually ways to do it. But um, anyway, we'll, we'll move on from there. Does that kind of help clear it up or, or open your guys' eyes a little bit? Yes. yes thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. So what business can you start or purchase with a, okay, so now we're moving to the qualified small business stock. Um, oh, here we go. Uh, what business can you start or purchase with a qualified small business? Stock? Well, the, the handout really kind of specifies what you can't do. Okay. I mean, I can't buy a restaurant, a bar, um, a hotel, motel. Um, I can't, for me, I can't have my CPA business um, in a qualified small business stock or a lawyer, uh, you can't have it. Uh, it's basically if you're licensed to do it, like engineering or anything, you, you can't qualify. But basically, it's um, for non-licensed businesses like high tech or anything like that, um, the, the qualified small business stock is is uh, available to use all right can you can you work for this business yes yeah so same thing you can be an employee you can be an right. employee of, of the corporation taxation there are ways to minimize wage taxation okay um what are the what are the financial options with this program well, after holding the stock six months and somebody says, I, okay, you, you can sell it, you sell your shares or something, uh, or you have, you have uh, 60 days to take those funds and reinvest them in another uh, qualified small business stock. 
to finish out the five-year holding period. Okay. So you have to run it for a minimum of five years. Okay. And, I, and you told me with the qualified small business stock, you can sell up to $10 million tax-free, right? Yeah. After $10 million, then you pay taxes, right? Yeah. Okay. It's it's basically uh, that ten million dollar rule on the on the qualified stuff. But yeah, account. ten million or more, you're saving at least three million dollars in taxes, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, can these assets be sheltered from creditors? Um, this is uh, this is really uh, personal stock, so it's not sheltered from the creditors. Okay. Well, I mean, if you do things right, then you don't got to worry about that, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I don't want. To creditors to be mad at me. Okay. How are profits taxed in a qualified small business stock? Well, you're paying tax on the, on the, the corporate C, profit. On the C corp, right? Yeah. On the C corporation. Okay. And so that's why you have the S corp invoice the C corp, but then the S corp flows through to your personal taxes anyway, right? right? Okay. All right. Um, when can you personally receive the proceeds from the sale of the business? Um, you can receive them, you know, at any age. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so you don't have to be 59 no. and a half. Um, let me say back up a little bit. On the qualified small business stock, you have a C corporation that pays tax. But say, uh, like uh, uh, Dave was indicating, uh, I want to take money out, okay? Um, and you can set up a S corporation over here it's called an administrative service company that simply says I'm handling all the, the office work and the administrative work and I'm invoicing the corporation on a monthly basis and you pay me. Now I'm over here on the on the S corporation. I can take take a, a low salary out and the rest is is distributions which avoids the Social Security and Medicare. On the other side, it's basically, um, I want to buy this building. Well, it shouldn't be in the corporation. It shouldn't be in the S corporation. So I set up an LLC over there and that has my office building in it and it invoices the corporation for the rent on a monthly basis. Cool. So I'm taking money from rent from the corporation I'm, uh, and I'm taking... Um, other money uh, over into my S corporation. So I have theoretically the ability to um, essentially skim off some, a lot of the profit over into different entities where I have better tax advantage. That's pretty cool. Um, all right. What is the main benefit of this program? Um, well, it, it's 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 you have the ability to create a business and grow it rapidly and and uh, sell it down the road tax free. Yeah, I mean not even that far down the road, five years, right? So, yeah. Like me, I'm not going to be 59 and a half in five years, so um, it'd be a good program for me if I were wanting to sell something in five or six years, right? No, it would it'd be a good program anytime because oh, basically anytime. Okay. you you control that money once that's sold. Okay, it's in your pension plan. You have a checkbook on it. Mm. So it's basically, if I want to buy another business, I can do that. Okay. And then the maximum amount of gain is 10 million or more, right? Yeah. But, but more is tax, right? Yeah, more is tax. Okay. Uh, what about the required investment for a qualified small business stock? Um, well, it, it's personal money. So whatever, whatever you put into it, uh, to purchase a stock or whatever, that's that's uh, that's allowed. Okay. Okay. All right. Again, guys, if you have any questions, please butt in and ask. I'm totally happy with that. All right. Um, is there a maximum amount of assets that can be accumulated in a qualified small business stock? Yeah, in a qualified small business stock, you you cannot have more than fifty million dollars in assets. And 80% of those assets um, have to be um, used in the trader, uh, conducting trader business. 
Sounds like you need a good accountant to figure all that out for you. Yeah, it's job security. <laughs> I know. I don't want to figure this all out. The good thing this guy loves this stuff, right? Man. Um, yeah, mind blown. When I met Ken and he started teaching me all this stuff, I'm like, wow. I, I think it was Jesus, like, just blessing me with somebody on this earth who has amazing knowledge. Most of what you'll find out there on the street is guys who don't know the tax rules, they invariably go and do something and they're cheating. And that's where they get into trouble with the tax law, yeah. to, with the IRS. So it's basically what you really want to do is understand the tax law. I tell people, I, like the two areas I sell, I want to make you a lot of money. Over in that area, I tell people there ain't no rules. If I wanted to sell cocaine and make a lot of money over there, you can do that. There's downsides legally. But in any event, if I you think you meant medical marijuana. <laughs> if you sell that, the IRS <laughs> is still wants their cut. Yeah. Okay. But if you once you you step over that that line for taxes, then you're into the biggest rule book in the world. And you really have to to follow the rules to stay out of trouble over there. Okay. All right. Um, can the program also hold real estate property in a qualified small business stock? Um, it, it, it can, but you don't want it to, but you don't want it to. You basically, what you do is you set up an LLC alongside of it. And that is holds the manufacturing facility or the, or the, Okay. Uh, rental property or whatever you want to put in there. All right. Now, here's a big question. Can you convert existing business over to utilize this program? Um, there is a methodology for um, rolling over an existing business into the qualified small business area and then starting that five-year holding period. Okay. So if you have a current business, you can put it in here and, and start that five-year yeah. timer. Okay. That's good news right there, right, guys? Yes. Yeah. All right. Can, can one, oh, keep hitting the wrong. My mouse is sensitive. There we go. Can another corporation own the stock in the entity in this one? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> um, what, uh, one aspect, um, I don't know if I cover it in here, is basically what, um, is permissible is, okay, I'm a sales agent and I'm going in and um, uh, your, my commission is 20 grand, okay? You give me 10 grand in cash and 10 grand of stock. Hmm. Now, that stock because it was originally issued by the company, qualifies, starts, starts my five-year hold on there. So if I hold that stock individually, I'm just a sales agent for some uh, other company. I hold that for five years and then sell it. I, I get it tax-free. Oh, wow. Tax-free stock benefits. That sounds... Sounds like something some employees might really want, right? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Or outside people, too. Oh, outside people? Yeah. All right. Um, what records need to be kept? Sounds like that's your department, right? Um, yeah. It's basically what we do is a, uh, what, once we set it up, we go in on a quarterly basis and review and make sure that the, the, the doc, there's documentation on the financial side and the and the stock holding side so that after five years, if the IRS wants to question, did you in fact hold it for five years, et cetera, uh, was it originally purchased by the company? It's all documented. Okay. Well, that's pretty cool. All right, what happens if the stock um, is sold or distributed before the end of the five-year holding period? Like I said, you've got, 60 days to take that money and roll it over into another qualified small business stock 
entity to continue that holding period. Yeah, it's just like avoiding, um, um, I don't know why I can't think of the tax when you sell your house. What's that called? Yeah, that, uh, but, but on the house, um, there's, um, uh, as long as you lived in there two years, you're not going to pay tax. Oh, that's right. Up to a, a quarter million for individuals. It's an investment property. Half a million for married couples. Let's see. Okay. Um, let's see. How must the C corporation stock be acquired? Um, well, it must be purchased directly from the corporation. So it must be like new stock. I can't, you can't buy the stock I have. And uh, even though it's qualified in my hands as a as a QSBS stock, you can't you can't buy my stock and have it qualified in your hands. So it has to be original purchase stock. Okay. All right. Any questions on that, guys? All right. Is it possible to reward employees um, or attract investors with this program? Uh, yes, I mean it's highly um, advantageous to have somebody put in money and know that in five years it potentially is going to be tax free to them. Yeah, or given stock to employees, right? Tax free, and they can hold on to it for five years. That's yeah. that's really that's really cool program right there. I know if you work for like Amazon, I think. Everybody works for Amazon. So they employ so many people to give them <laughs> stock, but it's not tax-free stock. Imagine getting tax-free Amazon stock. That'd be kind of cool, right? All right. Um, does a, does filing a personal tax return, such as married separately, affect the tax-free profit deduction? Yeah, you can't file a tax return married filing separately. Have to file together okay. with that with this program. Okay. Um, any questions here, guys? Any any questions? I'd like to hear some thoughts on this. Let's let's get out of this share. Um, I'd love to hear some of your thoughts on it. Um, Rob, you had a few questions. I'd like to know what your thoughts are. Well, I would just ask him to do it for. Me. Sorry, but I mean, my question would be: if we did that, then how do we educate ourselves in time? Because we're busy running our business. He's handling the accounting. And then we can kind of get up to speed over time, you know, at an hour a night or an hour a week or whatever, um, to kind of get a better understanding of what he's doing for us, you know, that kind of thing, instead of doing it ourselves, right? I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do this myself. I would be, I would be too worried I'm going to screw up. Yeah. Generally, you can't really do it yourself. Right. Uh, these are not programs that you can set up yourself. Once they're set up, they run pretty seamlessly, okay? You're on an annual basis on both programs, you're doing a, a 1120 uh, tax return, okay? That's what you're doing. On the, the 401k area, if, if you have a quarter of a million dollars in assets in that plan, then you have to do, um, uh, what's called a 5,500, which is an information return to the Department of Labor. They want to know what you're doing with your retirement plan. plan. But it's just, a, it's just an information return. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the LLC information for California, Statement of Information. Where are you located, Rob? California. Oh, you're in California? Okay. Com California. Yeah, yeah. I love it here. It's great. It's I love beautiful, it. Beautiful, that's for sure. Really nice, yeah. How about you, Chris? You got any any thoughts on this? Oh, you're, you're muted. Here. Sorry, I asked you, and then no, not at the moment. I'm there. I'm you go now, for sure. All right. Yeah, it's good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, it's, I mean, great stuff. Uh, Tim or Joel, do you guys have anything? I have a question. So are um is um your guest i, I think or you might refer to him as a guest i'm not sure and, yeah um is he offering his services to help people like us start such a thing i do i do these i do the i do work throughout the u.s okay um um 
And so it's like uh, most of my clients I've never seen face to face. Um, and, well, this is nice. We all get to see face to face right here, right? Because these are because these are federal programs, they're not restricted by state. Okay. Where are you located, Tim? Indiana. Oh, Indiana. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Nice. You can do them anywhere in the country. Okay. The only thing like uh, you have in in California is you because you have to set up like corporations and, and LLCs, uh, California taxes those heavier than most other states. <clears throat> so I guess that's why people have the LLCs in another state like Delaware, Nevada, well, Arizona. Let, let me put it that way. I'm not an advocate of putting up, setting up Wyoming LLCs or Nevada. Delaware corporations. Yeah. Okay. Where I have the corporation or the LLC, I have to file a tax return. So if I was going to buy something, a prop, rental property, I'm setting up an Arizona LLC. Gotcha. Because there's no advantage to, to going outside the state. Yeah, and see, we just hear there is, and so we're like, well, you know, until we get there, we'll just, we don't need that information if we're not doing it. I just, I just did an LLC in California, so just yeah. recently filed my statement of information, which I happened to get back from the Secretary of State when I mailed it in and filled it out completely. They want me to do it, and then I had to do it online. Weird. I don't know. Hmm. Anyway. Yeah. Oh. The, the whole tax area is getting um, more complicated year by year by year. You know, it's just, it's a god awful mess now. Government has some sticky fingers, huh? Yeah. Well, they, they put, they put layers, new tax law on new tax law on new tax law. And it, 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 it it's, uh, the rule book gets bigger and bigger. Mm. All right. Well, um, Ken, thank you so much. My pleasure. Um, this guy is a wealth of knowledge. Uh, I'm going to leave his information on collaboratepros.com slash live. So uh, you can visit his website. You can watch some YouTube videos he has. Um, this is one of the most giving men I've ever met in my life. Um, he literally would get on a phone call with you and not send you a bill. Um, he doesn't do that for me anymore. He used to. I started making money. Now I get billed from him all the time. But <laughs> <laughs> he does have great knowledge and great information. Um, so thank you so much, Ken. Well, I grew up on a farm. You know the cows to milk, and you know the ones that you're not going to get any milk out of, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you're not making money. I guess he ain't charging you. That's what he's saying, right? <laughs> but but it's, it's, it's really, I find it really interesting and fun to, one, devise and and uh, and play the game of making money okay that's the whole deal with business um, if any of you want to send me an email I've got a, um, a couple things I could send you is basically that I've got a, a, a three-stage metric that everyone should really be doing on any business that they have the whole deal is, I got to increase sales. I got to do better than I did last year. I got to increase sales month over month, year over year. I've got to increase profits, but at a greater percentage increase than I increase sales. Because if I don't increase it at an efficiency rate, I'm, 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 I'm not as efficient oper running an operation. So sales, profits. The last one is basically, I gotta have bank, I gotta have money in the bank. So I need to squeeze out money. Like I was telling Dave earlier, I had a client over here that um, they had 300 grand in, in uh, receivables. I devised a, screen, uh, a, a program so that they could eliminate their receivables over probably about a year. These boys, they valued ego and know-it-all attitude more than money. 
and you know I don't have them as a client anymore. But it's basically is basically you're only in the business to make money, and by so doing, I'm providing these jobs for these other people, and I have a responsibility to to uh, build the company so that they have a future. Um, but that but that is there. I'm in the process of writing a book for um, uh, of about six uh, no uh, ways to make no uh, make tax free money, and mm-hmm. and uh, but I don't have it done yet. I've seen the notes of this book; it's pretty impressive. Yeah. We'll take some chapters though. Pardon? We'll just take a few chapters. They'll be. I'm sure they're golden, so we could use them. <laughs> Angela, yeah. did you see he said that number six? Six, six ways to tax free money. There you go. Something yeah, one, two, three. Six. Isn't there like seven of us on the call? So somebody's going to play <laughs> musical chairs and be left out. There's a, there, I got, I, I my graduate, my, my degree, original bachelor's degree is in finance. And what I got intrigued on is that you think you go to school and, well, they taught me everything on finance. You hit the street and the guy you talk to on the street he never went, he never set foot on college campus and he teaches you and you can buy houses for a dollar. How can you buy? They never taught me that in college. Mm -hmm. And I did it and I got so excited on the, on the deal that I forgot to give the couple the dollar. (laughs) And and for free, I got, got it for free. Yeah. Um, But it's basically, um, and it got me intrigued on um, researching and uh, how do I do business with no money? Because every one of you, when you take money out of your pocket, you can lose it. It'll fall on the ground. It'll, it'll be lost in a deal, whatever. What's the smart way to do it? Do a deal with no money. Mm-hmm. Just okay. like at the beginning, he said he and, got and that million dollar property for did nothing. You hear that, Dave? Do a deal with no money. No money. <laughs> but and, and and that's that's the other book I have. I've got all the I've got 150 ways of doing it. Um, I just haven't put it together in a book yet. Hmm. Hmm. Cool stuff. Very excited. It's Very fun. Cool. Yeah. So next week, Angela, we are gonna talk on. Um, ideas to bring in more revenue to your business. Um, so next week, when you come to the show, bring a ten to twenty thousand dollar idea that you've personally implemented in your own business um, that actually generated ten to twenty thousand um, dollars. So I'll come with an idea that I've done that I've implemented that has brought me ten thousand dollars or more, um, and every one of you can bring that. And guess what? Share the knowledge with each other. Um, we have six people on the show, which if we implement them all, we should be able to bring in $60,000, right? Is that the math? All right. Guys, thanks for showing up tonight. It was a thanks, lot of guys. fun. I, I'm smarter. I've heard this guy a hundred times, but I still feel like I learned something tonight. So thank you so much, Ken. Thanks, Dave. And don't forget the wine. Yes. He was not wine right now. It's wine time. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Thanks, guys. All right. Have a great night. Nice meeting you guys. Thanks. Thank yeah. You thanks, Rob. See you, Chris. See you, Tim. All right. Thank you. Later, you. Chris and-